Welcome to Swipe. Here's what's in store for you this week. Thomas finds out how a new app is helping power the fight against cancer. I join groups of five and six-year-olds playing with electric dough. And Lucy's fighting for survival in the world of Conan the Barbarian. That's coming up in our games review. Stay with us for all of that and more. First, though, let's get a look at the tech stories that made headlines this week. Twitter told its more than 330 million users to change their passwords after a bug was identified. It meant some passwords had been stored in plain text on its internal computer system. Facebook announced it's going to begin offering its own dating service focused on long-term relationships. Other news from the Social Network's annual developer conference included a new way for people to clear their browsing history from the site. Engineers have been developing a solar-powered drone that will be able to stay airborne for up to a year. BAE Systems and tech company Prismatic have joined forces to work on the unmanned vehicle. They hope to begin test flying next year. The drone could serve as a low-cost option for surveillance or to bring communications to remote areas. The headset designed to make you lean that we previously covered here on Swipe has picked up a gong at the Yahoo Sports Technology Awards. Modius took the Best New Concept or Innovation Award. Fitbit won Most Innovative Wearable. And the Best App Award went to Ordnance Survey. And pupils from a school in London have been named winners at the world's largest robotics competition in America. The 14-year-olds from Queen Elizabeth School in Barnet beat off competition from 400 teams of youngsters from 40 countries to take the VEX IQ Challenge Excellence Award. They were judged on research, robot design, programming and driving skills. Next up, you might think that when you're asleep you can't do anything useful except recharge your batteries. But this week Thomas has been to Imperial College London to find out how when you nod off you could be using your smartphone to contribute to finding a cure for cancer. Now, fancy joining the fight against cancer? And all you have to do is, well, almost nothing at all. DreamLab, an app developed by Imperial College London and the Vodafone Foundation, lets you join the battle against cancer by turning your smartphone into an overnight powerhouse. So we've got the DreamLab app here on this phone. Kirill, you were the scientific team leader on this app. Can you tell me how it is that it works? Sure. When you plug uh, in your phone uh, and uh, power DreamLab, it downloads a tiny portion of our huge scientific projects uh, from the cloud, uh, process uh, the data and deposit the results back to us. So this chopping up of the different calculations that need to be done, doing them on smartphones and sending them back, surely that speeds everything up quite a lot. The same calculations uh, performed uh, on a personal desktop computer could have taken over 300 years. If we uh, combine the power of 100,000 of smartphones, these calculations can be done within the two to three months' time. By farming out the work to idle smartphones, the project hopes to reduce not only the time it takes, but also the cost, which usually comes with cloud computing. When it comes to medical research, we've seen the potential of pooled processing power before, when the human genome was first sequenced by a global network of computers. By using the same concept on our smartphones, this app hopes to create a bank of information to be used by cancer labs around the world. After being released earlier this week, the app achieved over 6,000 downloads in just 24 hours. When you're at sleep and you're charging your phone at night, your phone's processing power is just lying there idle. And if we can harness that, then we can help the, with the cancer research problem that Imperial has got. So we're asking people when they charge their phone to also open the DreamLab app so we can use that collective processing power. Now, anyone can get involved if you've got a smartphone. You don't just have to be a Vodafone customer. The team hope to have a network of hundreds of thousands of phones in no time at all all helping forge the next step in the battle against all forms of cancer. Thomas Newton, Sky News. Now, here's why I'm at a school this week. Over the years, we've covered a lot of educational tech toys here on Swipe, but today I'm going to be getting hands-on with a kit that claims to teach children as young as four how to build electric circuits with dough and superheroes. Go on, Elise. Oh, that is a good brick. Well done. 
there's some important learning happening here. These children are helping superheroes by playing with a kit that sets the missions online to create things in real life using conductive dough and electricity. Joseph, Elise and I are building a wall so that Hulk's fist can smash into it. How are those bricks going, Elise? Good. When Hulk's fist hits the wall, it completes an electric circuit and makes a noise. The electric hero kit from STEM toy makers Tech Will Save Us was a collaboration with Disney and Marvel Studios, which explains the superhero theme. These five and six year olds are still learning how to read, but now they're getting to grips with electricity. 65% of kids that are in primary school today will have jobs that have not been invented yet, which is pretty amazing. Um, one of the big ways that kids will begin to navigate that future is by being problem solvers. What we're excited about is seeing kids like this kind of come to life when they see how it works, when they see that they can actually be producers of it, that they can actually express themselves with it, that it's not just a glorified television screen. Other tasks involve making lights work, like here, on these freshly made superhero badges. Red wire in the top, black wire in the bottom. Oh, look at that, the light came on. Yay, well done. Educational tech toys are popping up all the time. So I wondered, how do you spot a good one from a gimmick? To find a good one, it's where you've got children where they can explore the science or the maths or the technology or the electronics through something that they're enjoying and having fun with. So they don't actually realise they're learning it. Is four too young to be learning how to create electric circuits? Not at all. The younger, the better. In fact, there's this idea that we are born as scientists, that babies start to observe and explore the world around them. So the more they can explore, the more they can find out at an early age, the more then they'll be able to learn and take with them as they go on and further up their education. As the superhero missions are completed, they get harder. And I'm told the tasks are limitless. After all, a hero's work is never done. Time for our video games review now. And there's no dough, but Lucy has brought a new way to play. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze actually came out a few years ago on the Nintendo Wii, but now Nintendo are re-releasing it for the Switch, which means you no longer have to play it in the confines of your living room. It's a side-scrolling platforming game featuring Donkey Kong, who everyone knows and loves, but it's not just Donkey Kong, it's members of his family too, so you can go through these beautiful colourful levels and have various members of the Kong family help you out if you get into trouble. The original game was known for being quite challenging, so what they've done for the Switch version is they've added in a brand new mode where you don't play as Donkey Kong, you play as Funky Kong, who was actually in the original game but now he's a playable character. You can play as Funky Kong and make it a little bit easier on yourself. Honestly, if you like joyous Nintendo platformers, then you're going to have a great time with Tropical Freeze. Conan Exiles has actually been playable for quite a while, but now it's finally coming out uh, its final finished form, but that's not to say that it's not still getting new updates and new things added to it. It is a survival game in an open world version of the Conan the Barbarian world. You don't actually play as Conan, you play as a character that you create yourself, but you do get rescued by him at the very beginning of the game. And then you kind of are free to set out and explore, but most importantly you have to survive. All the while you have to build settlements for yourself and build new weapons and armor and crafting. And of course there are things that you have to fight, so not only are there environmental things, but you can also fight against your friends if you want to do some PvP. If you're interested in any way in survival games, it's a lot of fun. You can play on PC, Xbox One and PS4. Nintendo Labo is the other big release this month, and it is very, very different to what you might expect from a video game, because part of it is cardboards. Uh, I assembled this myself. Uh, and had a very fun afternoon doing so. You'll first make creations out of the cardboard sheets. If you have a Nintendo Switch system, you buy the Labo pack, and what happens is they give you these on-screen instructions and you build the things out of cardboard. They give you all the things that you need. What Labo does so cleverly is you can attach your Nintendo Switch controllers to it. They fit in, slot in, and you can play games using these controllers that you've just made out of cardboard. Nintendo have also done this very, very clever thing where they reward exploration, curiosity, and learning. So 
you can explore and it tells you exactly why it works, how it works. So if it breaks, you know exactly what to do. It gives you the ability to make your own Toy-Cons and actually design games with it yourself. And of course, because it's cardboard, you can really get your artistic side out. In a world where we just play loads of, you know, beautiful AAA games and exciting indie games, Nintendo are really thinking outside the box with Labo. If you want to basically become a big child again, play with Labo. Well, that's it for this week's show. Don't forget to join us again for more Swipe next week. And in the meantime, why not follow us on Twitter at Sky News Swipe? Then you can see what we get up to throughout the week. Bye-bye.